Welcome back, everybody. This is Joe Astorino, CCIE number 24347. And in today's video lesson, we're going to be taking a look at the Spanning Tree Protocol Root Guard feature, another one of these advanced Spanning Tree features uh, that we can go ahead and add to our existing Spanning Tree topology to help make things a little bit more secure for us from a Layer 2 perspective. So uh, as usual, we will be digging into this at the command line on real Cisco switches. But before we do that, let's just talk a little bit about what root guard is. Now I know that when I was first learning, there were all these different types of guards I had to worry about with uh, spanning tree. So we had uh, BPDU guard, and we had loop guard, and we had root guard, and we had BPDU filter, and all these different things and it was a, a bit hard to keep them all straight so uh, one thing I always remembered with root guard specifically the feature we're talking about today is that with uh, root guard the name is actually really relevant to what it does so with root guard what it does is it guards your root bridge which is why they call it root guard so what it does is it protects the integrity of your root bridge. In other words, when you have a root bridge in a well planned out network, it's, it's usually going to be by design. And uh, you want that root bridge to remain the root bridge unless for any reason you want to go ahead and manually change it. But what you don't want is the root bridge to dynamically change to something that you didn't expect and affect your network negatively. Um, and we're going to walk through that here in the diagram. So what root guard does is it says, okay, we know who the root bridge is, and we're going to make sure he stays the root bridge. We're going to protect the integrity of that root bridge, or guard the root bridge, and make sure that nobody else can plug in a switch and all of a sudden become the root bridge, cause bad things to happen. So looking at the diagram here, we have a pretty typical setup. Um, what I want you to focus on here is, this is kind of a simulation of your typical enterprise network. Imagine that CAT1 and CAT2 were your two core switches. In our lab, of course, it's a 3560 and a 3550. But imagine these maybe are your 6500 chassis or Nexus or whatever it is you have running. And uh, so these are your two core switches. And you've picked Catalyst1 here to be the spanning tree root for all your VLANs. And then what you have down here is your typical access layer closet and Catalyst 3. So it's got two uplinks for redundancy. One to the root bridge and one to the secondary core up here. Now if these are layer 2 links, of course, one of these is going to end up in blocking mode, which is where you see FAST019. So that's your typical kind of closet. Now Catalyst 4 is going to simulate somebody plugging a switch in maybe underneath their desk uh, at work, just plugging it into a spare drop. And we're going to really use that example to drive home root guard. So why, to really understand the feature, it's under, important to understand why you would need it, or what does it help you protect against. I mean, okay, we know it guards the root bridge, but let's say that somebody else became the root bridge. I mean, big deal, who cares, right? I mean, how is that going to affect me? Well, this is how. Take a look at this drawing. Let's say, for example, someone plugs in Cat4 under their desk, and by some random chance, Cat4 maybe has a lower bridge ID. So it gets elected the new spanning tree root bridge. If that were to happen, what would happen is Cat4 Fast023 would become a designated port. Fast023 on Cat3 would become a root port. Fast 22 on Cat 1 and Fast 19 on Cat 2 would both become root ports. Both of these on Cat 3 would be designated ports. And one of these links between Cat 1 and Cat 2 would be a designated port. The other one would be blocking. So essentially what you would have, if Cat 4 took over as the root bridge, you would have uh, the link between your cores essentially down. It wouldn't be able to pass traffic because one of these links would be in the spanning tree blocking state. So really, if you think about it, if you want to get data then between core 1 and core 2, so your cross core, you're going to have to go all the way down through this access layer closet, which oftentimes is 
a much uh, less beefy of a device. I mean, it, it wouldn't be able to handle it in many cases. So all of a sudden you're pushing cross-core data through an access layer switch. Now that's a little bit more of an extreme example. That's not always the case. But that's the reason why you want to protect your spanning tree root bridge. So let's kind of look into root guard and uh, a little, talk a little bit more about how it works. Basically what it does is you're going to configure root guard on any ports that are facing away from the root. Or you're going to configure them on ports where you never expect to see a BPDU from a root bridge. And what it does is um, the switch is going to look at on those ports when it receives BPDUs. It's going to look at those BPDUs and it's going to say, are those BPDUs talking about or announcing a different root bridge than what I already know about? If we see BPDUs that are what we call superior, or they have a better bridge ID, a lower bridge ID, and they're going to basically try to take over as the root, what we do is we put the port into a special spanning tree state called root inconsistent, which for all intensive purposes is blocking because nothing's going to pass through that port. No data is going to go through. It will still listen for BPBDUs, but basically it's in a listening type state. And uh, what happens is once the superior BPDUs stop coming, we automatically transition back to forwarding which is nice. It doesn't require any manual intervention like uh, a shutter or no shut, anything like that. Another way to think about things here, when you think about the term root guard, technically what it does is it prevents a port that it's configured on from ever becoming a root port. Now if you know your spanning tree, you know that a root port on a switch is the one that's closest to the root bridge. So that would make sense. For example, if we configured root guard here on cat1 fast 0 22 um, we're saying we never want that to be a root port because if cat4 all of a sudden usurped authority and became the root bridge um, in a normal circumstance fast 0 22 up here would become a root port we don't want that to happen we want to prevent that from happening so we configure root guard in other words that port can never become a root port because that would mean it's facing towards the root bridge downstream and that's not what we want. Actually is a very simple feature to configure so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump on to cat1 for a second and we're gonna go ahead and configure this and I'll show you how it works. So I'm gonna jump into fast 0 22 and I'm just gonna simply say spanning tree guard root that goes ahead and enables root guard on the interface. You will notice we get this nice little console message saying that it is on. If you want to validate things, take a look at show spanning tree interface detail. That's a good one. So there's your command show spanning tree interface detail and we can see that root guard is enabled on the port. So we know it's on. Let's jump back to the diagram. So what that means is on fast 22 now, if it sees any BPDUs that have a lower bridge ID, or they're going to try to become the root bridge, it'll put the port into root inconsistent state. So let's take a look at that for a second. Let's just do a show span. As the diagram says, we are the root bridge here. You can see that here. And our priority is 24577. So let's force this to break. Let's jump down here on cat4 and tell cat4 that it has a lower spanning tree priority. So I'm going to say spanning tree VLAN 1 is the only one we're dealing with today. And I'm going to say priority is 4096. Now what that's going to do, since the priority is lower, it's going to make the bridge ID lower. Remember the bridge ID is your priority appended to your MAC address. So now what's going to happen is cat4 is going to advertise those BPDUs up to cat3 with a lower priority. Cat3 is eventually going to pass those up to the root bridge on fast 0 22 of cat1. When cat1 sees those, it's going to go, oh, someone has a lower bridge ID, a lower priority. It's going to try to become the root bridge 
thus transitioning FASTO22 to be a root port. I cannot let that happen, so to prevent that, I'm going to go into root inconsistent state. Let's see how we did here. And there we go. We see on the console, it did warn us. Hey, I got this superior BPDU, and I am, I am enacting my root guard here. I'm going into blocking mode. Our root guard is blocking FASTO22. Now we can validate that. Take a look at this. If I do a show interface here, you know, everything seems to be fine. Interface is up, line protocols up, everything looks good. Show interface status, another popular one, looks fine. It says I'm trunking, I'm connected. The only way you would know this, take a look at show spanning tree. And I'm just going to say VLAN 1. And it's going to tell me right here, FASTO 22 is in the blocking state and it's root inconsistent. That's where you're going to find that information there. So now let's go ahead and fix the problem. We're going to jump back onto cat4 and remove our command. That's going to set the priority back to the default, which is going to be higher than our 24 whatever it was on uh, cat1. Give it a few seconds and we should see it automatically fix itself now over on cat1. Remember we said it's an automatic process. We're still rooting consistent. We should see a log actually pop up when it pops over. And there we go. So now it tells us, hey, I stopped hearing about those superior BPDUs. We're all good. I'm going to move things back to forwarding. And we can see now, through our show spanning tree here, it's actually still in the listening state. Remember, we have listening for 15 seconds, learning for 15 seconds, and then finally forwarding. So we were in listening, now we're in learning, and any second now, there we go, now we're back to the forwarding state. So that's basically root guard in a nutshell. Remember, it protects the integrity of your root bridge. Uh, another way to think about it is it prevents an interface where you configure it on from becoming a root port in spanning tree. You configure it at the interface level with the spanning tree guard root command and things basically fix themselves um, if it does go into root inconsistent state. Remember if you do hear a superior BPDU you'll go into root inconsistent state until those things stop. Now the other question we hear a lot is well where do I configure this thing in my network? Basically you're going to want to configure it on every single switch port where you're not expecting to hear about a root bridge. So really here, if this was a real network, I'd put it here on FASTO22, but I'd also put it down here on CAT3, FASTO23, facing towards the users. Because if someone plugs in a switch there, I want to catch it as early as possible and go ahead and put CAT3, FASTO23 into root inconsistent first and stop the problem from even getting up here. But generally you're going to put it anywhere in your network that uh, is facing a place where you don't expect to see a root bridge. And that's about it for today, guys. There's also a, a in-depth blog on this topic over on my blog at uh, astorinonetworks.com. You can follow me on Twitter at jastorino, and keep checking back here on the YouTube channel for more Cisco videos. Thanks for watching, everybody, and until next time, keep studying hard.